Hello, my name is Eric Meyer. I'm a developer advocate at Egalia, and I'm here to uh, present on Egalia's WebKit contributions in 2022 and our plans for contributing in 2023. Uh, but to begin, uh, as a brief introduction to those of you who may not be familiar with Egalia, Egalia is a, is a consultancy founded in 2001 in A Coruña, Spain. Today, it's a distributed company of 128 people in over 20 countries, distributed throughout 12 time zones. And actually, it might be more than 128 people uh, since I recorded this on Monday the 7th because we just keep hiring. So it was 128 people as I recorded this. Uh, from the beginning, Agalia has focused on working on open source technologies. And our work is rooted in sort of eight technology domains from the Linux kernel all the way up to the cloud. Uh, at least five of our eight specialization domains are involved in our work on WebKit, but really it all comes down to browsers and the web platform. I mean, we're focused on any industry that uses web-based technologies, and these days that's pretty much all of them. I mean, televisions, appliances, uh, whether they're kitchen or just general household appliances, uh, automotive display, digital signage, uh, industrial systems, various in-mobility information entertainment systems like those you find in the back seats uh, on airplanes, um, healthcare services. Uh, we're um, looking towards Android devices and mixed and virtual reality devices, which has led to our investment this year in the Wolvic XR browser, um, which is currently based on Gecko, um, but that could change in the future. Our long-term focus is really on any embedded device or system. Uh, in the immediate future, that means Linux and Android devices, uh, partly because that's where we got started and also because that's um, what a lot of devices are. But um, our, our long-term goals are to be able to work uh, with customers and bring software to any embedded device or system, which is uh, an ecosystem that is only just going to grow and grow and grow. So I'd like to uh, review a bit of 2022. Uh, first, by looking at 2021, this is the breakdown of commits to WebKit in 2021. It was 77% from Apple, 16% uh, from Agalia, 4% uh, from Sony, 1% from uh, the GNOME project, and then 2% uh, from... Uh, various other contributors, whether those were individuals who contributed patches to the code base or they were people who were working for companies but uh, didn't have a lot of commits, um, that that could um, any of those could be in that 2% slice. And it's interesting to compare this 2021 chart to 2022, where at first glance it doesn't look that much different. I mean, Apple went from 77 to 79%, Agalia went from 16 to 13%. You know, Sony from 4 to 3%, the 1% slice uh, changed from GNOME to uh, Red Hat. But what, uh, what we find interesting is that other slice went from 2% to 4%, which uh, indicates um, more contributions coming from uh, individual contributors and uh, from sort of small scale contributions, which we take as a positive sign. It means there are more and more people invested in uh, helping WebKit grow and advance uh, over time. Now, a lot of our contributions came from uh, our work on WPE WebKit, which is the official WebKit port for embedded devices, which is maintained by Agalia. Um, some of the work that we did in 2022 on WPE WebKit, um, we got Angle enabled on the development branch, and we're working on stabilization. Angle, for those who aren't familiar, is the almost native graphics layer engine, A-N-G-L-E. This is developed by Google and translates OpenGL ES2 and 3 calls into DirectX 9, DirectX 11, OpenGL, Vulkan API calls. It's really just it's a nice little engine to um, translate different uh, graphics calls uh, from you know one engine to another. Uh, besides WebGL2, um, we've opened up more possibilities such as uh, GPU process and WebGPU. Uh, these require Linux uh, DMA buff, which is a, a buffer handler, 
or some similar buffer sharing technology um, to work. Uh, GPU process support in WebGL, which would improve security, uh, also would require DMA buff or similar. Uh, we've been refactoring the scrolling code in both WPE and GTK. Uh, the goal is to make that scrolling smoother. And uh, we also have animation frame vsync analysis has been done, uh, improving smoothness, and also uh, work to address the fact that some commonly used benchmarks uh, give um, artificially lower than expected scores for um, for this area. Uh, when it comes to multimedia, we did a fair uh, amount of work on WebRTC. Uh, we upstreamed uh, GStreamer backend, uh, improved data channel support, and um, also did some work in media source extensions, that's MSE, and encrypted media extensions, EME, uh, upstream some work we'd done um, also some bug fixes, general maintenance. Um, we're still working uh, in the WebRTC space to support the high and main H.264 profiles and also cloud gaming. Um, there is there is some interest from customers in being able to uh, do cloud gaming on embedded devices. Uh, but one of our uh, biggest contributions or one of our biggest areas of work uh, when it comes to WebKit has been uh, WPE WebKit for Android. Um, this is the goal here is to bring WebKit uh, as an engine to embedded devices that run on Android because there are so many embedded devices now based on Android. We have to be able to compete there. It is not just for phones anymore. Not supporting Android embedded devices would cut us out of the markets for televisions, household appliances, the blossoming XR space where um, uh, most devices at least are are based on Android, possibly all of them. Um, although, given the way that the that space is changing, um, that you know any statement I make at this moment could be uh, obsolete uh, by the time you see this talk. Uh, but at any rate, we did a whole lot of work to make this happen. We have uh, already have Android WebView compatibility, uh, not for all APIs, but for a solid subset of them, uh, which should be enough for customers to uh, be able to consider. Um, WebKit for Android as an alternative for some of their use cases. Uh, we enabled hardware accelerated media playback, uh, at least in part. We have accelerated video and audio decoding, but not yet the encoding, which the encoding would be useful for things like, uh, for instance, video calls. So that's uh, an area that we hope to advance further in uh, the coming months and well, the coming months. Uh, we have process swap on support, which allows us to support multiple web processes. That's important from a security standpoint uh, and also necessary uh, for being a backend of the Android web view. Um, other things like full screen support, 64-bit uh, ARM target support. Uh, we updated it to the latest version of WP WebKit, at least at the time, and uh, did some refactoring, including the Java native interface layer. And then when it comes to WebKit itself, uh, JavaScript core work included um, doing some work towards enabling off-thread compilation, which is a nice performance uh, boost. Uh, Fine-tune some of the compilation th thresholds for 32-bit platforms. In fact, a lot of our work was around 32-bit uh, platform support, such as bringing WebAssembly to 32-bit platforms. Uh, that's still partly in process. We're still um, working on the just-in-time compilation. Uh, enabled WASM signaling memory on 32 bits. Um, added uh, brake pad dumps, uh, and also dropped ARMv7 soft FP support. And on the web platform, uh, we implemented gamepad support by implementing the gamepad API. Uh, that was um, an interest of a customer. They wanted to be able to support gaming on their uh, embedded device. So they wanted gamepad support. We were able to make that happen. Uh, HTML interactive form validation. Uh, we upstreamed most of our new layer-based SVG engine. Uh, some of the highlights uh, is that it uh, already supports compositing, Z-index, and 3D transformations. Uh, our internal metrics show that we're about 72% um, or maybe a little higher uh, completed with that. Uh, the idea is to finish that up, get to 100% in 2023, which I'll talk about in the second part of the talk. Um, we did do some work on the web speech API, although we're not done with that. And uh, focus visible 
um, is now enabled by default in uh, public versions of Safari, as well as ARIA attribute reflection. Uh, we have both of those enabled by default, and that's uh, work that Agali contributed to. Uh, on the quality assurance side, we've deployed some new Ubuntu 22 bots. Um, actually, we deployed a fair number of bots. We've got a new bot to test the build with Clang or Clang, if you prefer, and I do. Uh, we deployed performance bots for Raspberry Pi and some new MIPS hardware, as well as you know regular maintenance work, updating bots, fixing issues, the sort of thing that happens in quality assurance. And when it comes to the Interop 2022 project, uh, if you haven't been following along with this, uh, Interop 2022 is a, is a cross-browser um, project where the various browser teams come together um, and for 2022 agreed on 15 focus areas um, for you know places that browsers were not as interoperable as they could be and uh, needed to be better. So uh, as of the day that I took the screenshot, which was uh, Monday, November 7th, uh, Safari is on top, just edging out Firefox, at least in the stable releases. When we flip over to Experimental, Safari is still leading uh, at a score of 90, um, ahead of uh, both the Chrome Dev and the Firefox Nightly releases. Not by a lot, which is really great. It means that these browsers are much more interoperable than they have been in the past. Um, in fact, if you look at this graph that I pulled a few days earlier, um, you can see that at the start of the year, Safari was actually uh, at the at the bottom of the list, although not by much. And uh, as of the date that I took this uh, screenshot, is uh, at the top of the list, leading um, the other browsers. And so this means that um, collectively, uh, these browsers went from, let's say, 60% uh, interoperability, because that's about where Safari was, uh, now up to somewhere in the 80% uh, interoperable with uh, Safari out ahead waiting for others, um, which has been due to the efforts of lots of people. I don't want to claim that this is just a Galia that made this happen. Uh, many contributions from Apple and from other sources, but we were, uh, were proud um, that we were able to be a part of this. And if you look at the web compat scores, it's a very similar story with uh, Safari starting the work at the uh, starting the year at the back of the pack and as of uh, early November 2022 leading the pack and some of the work that we uh, did do there was uh, cascade layers um, work on form elements um, scrolling CSS scrolling uh, both performance and capabilities and also contributing to um, reviewing subgrid tests uh, which has been very important so what do we have planned for 2023 I'd like to start with uh, actually with WPE WebKit for Android. I had talked earlier about um, how we want to be able to compete in the Android space, bring WebKit as a possibility uh, in that area. Um, so some of the plans we have for this year are to keep up to date with the latest stable version of WPE WebKit itself, which since we're the maintainers should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we're looking at implementing some APIs that haven't been uh, added yet, like the file picker API, um, the ability to create message channels, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, possibly adding support for WebDriver, WebInspector, WebXR. Uh, those are all uh, areas that, that are of interest, uh, particularly with Android seeming to be the uh, operating system of choice for XR devices. Um, at least it, it seems to uh, come up in, in most of them, if, if not all of them, although the space changes so quickly, who knows? It could have could be different by the time you see this talk. Uh, but also, uh, we want to do some bug fixes and performance improvements. Uh, of course, any embedded device um, really uh, needs as much performance as you can possibly get out, out, of, uh, out of your code base, uh, particularly low energy performance. So uh, when it comes to WPE WebKit itself, in order to support the, the Android version, we'll be investing in WPE WebKit. Uh, that'll include performance improvements to 2D rendering. Um, most clients are looking for better 2D rendering. They want um, smoother and uh, more jazzy uh, you know, user interfaces, uh, whether it's on touch screens or, or not, so that they can you know, slide menus in and out and show videos to during the setup process of a, of a device, that sort of thing. Um, so we're hoping for 
in addition to just performance improvements to 2D rendering, some WebGL2 support and GPU process built on top of Angle. Want to keep improving that scrolling animation performance um, and uh, fix some issues uh, that prevent WP from scoring correctly on, on some common benchmarks. It's not even that we don't score well, it's that just the scores aren't correct. And then uh, there's, a, there's a sort of speculative plan, the Vulkan and Web GPU support. It's, um, it's an idea that we have, but it's not clear that we'll get to it in 2023. In part, that will depend on our customers and uh, what projects they contract with us for. If we have a, a customer who really needs Vulkan and or Web GPU support, then we'll be able to devote resources to making that happen. Uh, if not, then, uh, I mean, those will remain on our long-term uh, roadmap, but may not happen in 2023. We'll just have to see how that turns out. Uh, on the multimedia front, I uh, want to keep going with that GStream or backend implementation for WebRTC and keep contributing to MSE and ESE. That includes making um, the MSE eviction algorithm a little bit more quote-unquote aggressive uh, which hopefully will avoid some quota exceeded errors. Um, if we get far enough on web GPU, uh, I'm sorry, on GPU process, uh, video picture and picture support on embedded devices would be possible, and it remains an interest. Uh, but that support or that progress will depend on progress on GPU process. And we're also switching all of our media playback handling to Playbin three in order to keep up to date with uh, that that part of the tech space. When it comes to uh, WebKit itself, uh, in JavaScript core, we'd like to support the FTL tier for 32-bit and uh, continuing with that 32-bit theme, support for the new LOLJIT tier. I just like saying it that way. Uh, we want to continue porting the JavaScript core over to RISC architecture, um, add some uh, inline caching for WASM, um, extra neon and advanced SIMD registers, uh, and we would like to investigate creating a runtime sanitizer to simulate uh, pack failures on ARM64E hardware. And the last one, again, is a little bit speculative, thus the question mark. Uh, the temporal API is a replacement for the date API in JavaScript core. It's a really uh, very full-featured and capable API. Uh, but um, as implementation work has been done in uh, the Safari technology previews and also in... Um, uh, Chromium and in uh, Firefox Nightly, some implementation driven questions have come up. And so currently Temporal is in that sort of loop of we had a specif we have a specification, people have worked on implementing it. In the course of implementing it, they've discovered some problems or some ambiguities in the specification. And so now it's going back to the spec writers to say, you know, how should this be? Like, how do we deal with nanosecond precision in a situation where nanosecond precision maybe isn't possible or isn't called for, whatever. Um, so depending on how quickly that specification loop happens, um, we might be able to get to temporal implementation in 2023. If it takes a while for the specification questions to get resolved, that might get delayed into 2024. We hope not, but we'll see how that goes. We do know that uh, there are uh, patches waiting for um, both Firefox and Chrome, Chromium, uh, Gecko, however you want to put that, um, that are pretty much waiting for this stuff to get resolved, any adjustments uh, made, and then those, um, those patches landed so that uh, Temporal API support will come to those engines very quickly after a resolution, and we, would, we very much hope to have WebKit uh, keep up with that and uh, maintain interop interoperability with the other engines. Uh, on the web platform in general, we want to finish upstreaming the work on the new layer-based SVG engine and unify it with HTML rendering. Uh, historically, SVG, and for that matter, um, MathML, have been their own sort of parallel rendering engines, um, not really fully integrated with the HTML CSS rendering engine. Uh, we want to you know, finish the layer-based SVG engine and unify that with HTML rendering so that uh, it's really all one rendering engine instead of having to hand off back and forth between two. Uh, we want to keep doing implementation of the WebSpeech API and image bitmap for the GTK and 
GTK and WPE ports, uh, web speech um, we think will be very useful for embedded devices. Uh, we'd like to see implementation of device orientation for the WPE WebKit port. Uh, that'll be useful for any uh, device that has an uh, embedded browser and the device is supposed to be handheld. Knowing what orientation it's in could be very uh, important. So we're hoping we can uh, have customer support for that. And uh, similarly, the uh, implementation of the WebXR specification um, that's dependent on testing infrastructure and some platform code work, but um, we are very interested in that given our investment in Wolvic and um, our, our interest in being um, competitors in the XR space. This is definitely a, um, an interest of ours. Then we'd also like to fully support accessibility in GTK4, um, get some web process CPU limiting and page throttling, start working on a networking code such as QUIC and HTTP3, and uh, also support the web extensions API, hopefully in WPE and WebKit GTK. That's a little bit more speculative, that one, but we're hoping that we get there. And then on the quality assurance front, our plans for 2023, um, are to improve support for flatpak based workflows, also for the ARM v7 and ARM64 architectures. Uh, we want to support uh, add support in Clang for the Tartan plugin, um, add WebKit GTK and WPE to the OSS fuzz infrastructure, and uh, also get some bots uh, deployed for building and testing WPE on ARM64, uh, the WebKit search build, and uh, WPE security. Okay, well, I think um, that uh, that's a good coverage of where we've been this year and where we want to go next year. We would love to uh, provide any answers we can to any questions you have. But uh, thank you for joining us for this overview of uh, Galio's WebKit contributions uh, this year and next.